Well, one way to describe that game, very sloppy. And just overall, bad. Just overall bad. And this is two games in a row right now on this Western Canadian road trip that we got off to bad starts. We managed to get the point against the Canucks. But today, that poor start and very, very sloppy play was one of the main reasons we lost this game. And we lose tonight's game to the Calgary Flames by a score of 3-1. to one. It's our first regulation loss on the season in Game 4. And just not going to overreact because it's only Game 4. But right now we've seen two sides to this Flyers team. The first two games in the Czech Republic and the game in the home opener last Wednesday against the Devils. We saw a team that was ready to go right off the opening faceoff. Got a really strong forecheck, kept a nice steady energy going throughout the course of the game, getting a lot of scoring chances, very solid in our own defensive zone, not many turnovers. But the past two games in Vancouver and this game tonight in Calgary, very slow start, lots of turnovers, especially in this game tonight against Calgary, way too many icings, which Calgary did in turn score on some of those icings that we got in this game. And just lack of awareness. Our passes were terrible. It looked like sometimes our players were just afraid to do anything. Or just lack of awareness on the ice at all where our players were. And where do we want to pass the puck to. Because sometimes we would just throw the puck out there. Or try to pass a puck backwards when we think a player is going to be there. And it's not. And Calgary takes it away from us. So it's just very, very sloppy play these past two games and this one fully describes it and I don't want to make the excuse that the the time zone the constant change in time zones out of this first like week and a half to two weeks with playing in the Czech Republic playing at home and then going right to Western Canada so like the Flyers are constantly shifting through time zones which could affect it the way they they came out in these past two games but it's not the main, main excuse. It can't be an excuse. You have to be ready every single game. Have to be ready and awake for the opening face-off. There's no excuse for that. But could this time zone be affecting them, starting to affect them in this very weird schedule starting off the season be affecting them? Possibly. But I still digress. It's only the fourth game of the season. And it's still, in my opinion, way too early to judge this team. Just because it's... A very small sample size. We, we're we showing two different sides of this team right now. The one that I mentioned in the first two games of the season. And the other side which has been the past two games. So I expect, honestly, I expect better results tomorrow. Because we got a game right away tomorrow night in Edmonton. So hopefully the Flyers can have a quick memory. And just throw this game away. Because in games, in situations like this back to back, if you... Don't have that good of a night the first time. Got to have a quick memory. Throw it, throw it in the garbage, and that's that. So, let's go over this game. Like I said, very early off, the Flyers got to a very sloppy start. A lot of turnovers, a lot of icings, and just very sloppy overall play in general. And that leads to a very early Calgary goal, which is Michael Frolik. And it's kind of a weird play. The Flyers are trying to bring it up through the neutral zone. Puck kind of bounces around a few players a little bit. Provorov loses an edge by the bench, so he falls. So he is behind in the play. And then the Calgary Flames jump on that puck. And it's Michael Froelich who buries it behind Brian Elliott. Also, Brian Elliott got the start tonight. And I'll get into him a little bit later. But Froelich buries it behind Elliott to make it a 1-0 Calgary lead. And on that goal, Elliott looked a little bit pissed off because he thought he was maybe interfered on that play. But replay showed that it was Bronze Skate that bumped into his leg. And also, you can tell that Elliot kind of oversold it. He kind of flopped. So, what are you doing there, Elliot? There's no point of doing that if it's your own player bumping into your pad. But, nonetheless, it's a one nothing Calgary lead. And just constantly through this first period, just so many shift in... There was, like, so many penalties called. I think there was five in total. But... It was like one second the Flyers would have a power play, then on that power play, the Flyers will take a penalty. And the same thing for Calgary. When Calgary would get a penalty or a power play, they would take a penalty on that same power play. So it's like a constant shift from 5-on-4 four four to 4-on-4 four four to 4-on-3. Four 
There just wasn't consistent 5-on-5 five five play throughout the first period. And that can also affect getting a, your feeling for the game, but that's not a full excuse either. But there was like a constant shift from 5-on-5 five five to 4-on-4 four four to 4-on-3 four to 5-on-4, five four, just constant, constant penalties. And just on the Flyers' perspective, way too many icings. Way too many icings when our defenders would just dump the puck out of the zone and it would go all the way down the ice. And there was a lot of plays, especially on power plays, where we just weren't reading passes right. We were just throwing passes up, just up the middle of the ice, expecting someone to get it, and they're not there. Just expecting people to be there when they're not, and Calgary taking advantage of our mistakes. And that's basically the summary throughout the entire game. So, and also Calgary at the end of the first period, off of an icing, nonetheless, they win a face-off, they shoot it on net, Monahan's in front of the net. He, he. It, at first, it looks like it's in the net. It's a goal. It's two nothing Calgary. But you could see Brian Elliott once again is arguing to the referee. Looks like he's arguing that Monahan kicked the puck into the net. And off of the replay, Monahan's falling down, and it's obvious that he lifts his skate up to kick the puck into the net. So the refs actually agree with us there, even though the the call on the ice was obvious. It's a the goal was taken away, so it's a one nothing lead for Calgary after one. And we go into the second period, just once again, very sloppy play. And Calgary gets their second goal, yet again, off of another icing. And it's a very set up play. Ryan wins the faceoff, gives it to Giordano. Then he gives it to Mangiapain, who just puts it right by Elliott. It deflects off Sandheim's stick, and it's a 2 nothing Calgary lead. Just, it's just what you could summarize from the first two periods. Just very sloppy play. The Flyers just look dead on the ice and just... A lot of lack of awareness. It's simple to explain if you watch this game, but it's just they that in in overall it just wasn't good. They weren't good enough. They didn't look like they came out ready to play, and that was the uh, product on the ice for majority of this game. And then we go to the third period. This is when the Flyers finally decide to hey let's actually play a hockey game and try to win, but. It doesn't work out. Even though the Flyers, around five minutes into this period, they get their goal. Claude Giroux draws a penalty. And on that con- and on that current play, T- Konechny takes the puck. Gatori also has it. Konechny passes it up to an oncoming Niskanen, who buries it by his Riddick to make it a 2-1 Calgary lead. And then the Flyers are trying to battle back throughout this entire period. Still a lot of icings. Still a lot of sloppy play and turnovers. Surprisingly, no penalties in this period. With the consistent play of the calls of the refs today, there's surprisingly no penalties called in the third. But, yeah. It just, the Flyers tried to battle back, didn't work. We pulled Elliott late in this game, and Elias Lindholm buries it to make it 3-1. to one. So the comeback wasn't a reality. The Flyers were just very, very, very sloppy game. Didn't wake up until around the third period, which is not good. You can't do that every single night. And just it remind it reminded me too much of last year's team. Wake just the lack of preparedness to come into the games and not waking up until the third period and expect your team to come back from what a two nothing, three nothing lead. It reminded me way too much of last year's team with Dave Hackstall behind the bench. Because that happened way too much with Hackstall, and this game reminded me way too much of that. And then going to Elliot. Elliot was the reason we were in this game. Saving 35 out of 37 shots, even though there was 38 in total, that one that last shot was an empty netter, so it didn't go to Elliott. But Elliott was the main reason we were in this game. He was the main reason we were in it, making really big saves to keep us in the game, and overall he just didn't have any help throughout the entire throughout the entire night. Riddick on the other side for the Flames didn't really see that many chances. I think he only faced like 22 shots in total, and not many were high chances. It was just, I can remember like maybe one or two plays where there were high scoring chances. Besides the Niskanen goal. I think JVR in the second period, he has chances where he had like three shots on one try and just couldn't beat him. And then there was a play in the third period where Hayes was doing like a whole one man show. And tried to bring it to the front of the net and just couldn't bury it. And there was also, going back to the sloppiness in this game, on one of the power plays in the second period... There was a play where JVR was trying to go through four guys at once instead of just trying to set it up. 
There was a lot of bad instances on the power play where we either couldn't set it up, or one guy was trying to do way too much in order to set it up or try to score a goal. And that could go to basically the summary of the whole game. The Flyers were either trying way too much to do something, or sloppiness just was in control of this entire game. And that was that's the basic, basic summary of this entire game. The Flyers were very sloppy, and that resulted into a 3-1 loss. Waking up in the third period is not going to allow you to come back in into every game. The Flyers have to realize this. And and could possibly this be the the time zone shift affecting them? It could possibly be that. Who knows? But the Flyers need to be prepared. They got a game tomorrow in Edmonton at 9.30. And Edmonton got, has gotten off to a really hot start this season. They were undefeated until like a couple of games ago. I think right now they're either 5-1 and one possibly. To my knowledge right now, they're around 5-1 and one right now. So they got off to a really good start. And the Flyers have to be ready to play tomorrow. Play tomorrow. It's simple as that. And also a side note from off this game. And the worst kept secret in the Flyers organization. They signed Chris Stewart from his player trial contract to a one year 750k contract. It was the worst kept secret. And not going to overreact because I expected this to happen. But I'm not a fan of it. Because... His style of play, the gritty, the fighter, the enforcer guy, it's not really in the league anymore. It's not the league. It's a speed skill game. And if you're going to have a guy like that in the lineup, he has to show show some skill. He has to find a way to produce some way. Look at guys like Tom Wilson on the Washington Capitals. He plays that style, but he he manages to put goals on the board. Tom Wilson could put 20 to 25 to possibly 30 goals. So... Chris Stewart is not that type of player. He used to be for the Minnesota Wild where he was able to score goals, but that's not his game anymore. He hasn't been in the NHL for a couple seasons here. He played in London out of all places last season. It's just, I believe Chris Stewart, it's just his style of play isn't fit for the game anymore. If you're going to have a tough guy on your team, he has to provide in some, he has to put points on the board some shape or way. And that's not Chris Stewart. He's going to be playing four or five minutes. And even though Elaine Vigneault said it's going to be basically a day-to-day basis on what he does with Chris Stewart in the lineup, so maybe we won't see Stewart in tomorrow's lineup and we'll see Bunneman, who was scratched for him. So, who knows? Not a fan of the signing, but eh, it was the worst-kept secret and I expected it to happen, which I'm why I'm not as disappointed, because I expected it to happen. So, off of that, what are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on going into tomorrow? And what are your thoughts on this Flyers team overall in general? Like I said, it's still too early to judge this team as a whole, but they do need to get better in some aspects. So what are your thoughts on the team moving forward? What do you think they need to improve on? And just overall thoughts in general. So don't forget to drop a like, don't forget to leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.